Jeep here with more matter and murder. You know, I'm thinking about this generate new case thing. And I feel like this would be a fun game to stream and just generate new cases and then like have everybody in the audience help me in. I've thought about streaming once or twice, but I, just, I don't think I have enough people like interested in me as a human being to uh, do that and like get a good amount of people. But I have been thinking it over. Everyone loves a weekend house party, but it seems the gathering this weekend will be cut so much short. Quite unbelievably, Rector Quelms has been murdered. Body was found in the drawing room a short time ago. Having been occupied polishing your croquet mallet, you didn't see or hear anything unusual all evening. However, deciphering this little mystery should be an amusing way to pass the time. Local law enforcement are on their way and should arrive in an hour. There's no time to be wasted. We don't want the killer to escape. Oh, the building changes. Examine the eggs carefully. You don't notice anything unusual about it. Fortunately, a careful examination of the crime scene yields no additional information. Alrighty. Princess squints at you. She doesn't like what she sees. You have quite the nerve to ask her that. If you can check with Ward Constance, we were in the front hall together all night. Princess slams, face betrays no emotion. Many people in this house prattle on at this pretty group rinser that I pay no attention. Mm -hmm. Can't help you with this line of inquiry, detective. I have only the most fleeting glimpse of the corpse. <laughs> Alright. Probably wasn't the piano wire. Frost bills. <coughs> I thought I was alone in my room, weeping uncontrollably, as one does. But turns out I was in the kitchen with the ambassador we all after all. I really must find my ad glasses. Have you seen them? Hmm? Frost Bill sighs like a heartbroken tea kettle. I don't know why anyone does anything around this house, detective. I can't help you with that. She pauses tactfully. I mean, you really expect the maid to have an answer to that sort of question? Yes. Alright, it's not the rifle. Enough chit chat, she holds a perfectly manicured finger. Spent the ev entire evening in the kitchen with frost bills. Haven't I suffered enough? Mm -hmm. What if? Esther woos and pauses and lights a fresh cigarette. Takes your time asking me. No one ever tells me anything. Dang it. Alright, but those two are covered. Um. Oh, probably wasn't it. Huh? The ward holds her doll up and pretends the doll's talking. We are in the front hall of Princess Lamb. The doll sounds disturbingly like Winston Churchill. Huh. Reason to kill? The ward hovers on the edge of bursting into tears. I'm sure, I wouldn't know anything about that. Huh? The ward holds up her doll and Miss Pickles in a disconcertingly adult voice says, Stop asking me about scary things like weapons. I don't know. Mm. What an alibi? Aren't those for commoners? Mm. Okay. Alright, I know it's him, so I'm gonna get away from him. You saw Lord Plaggington wearing this ring earlier. Inside ban is inscribed with love always, Rector Qualms. Scrutinizing the knife, you discover traces of dried blood carelessly left on the blade. This has been used to kill Rector Qualms. Okay. I think I got it. Let's see what cues. Muscle Bobby appears on the scene just as you begin to gather. Or all begin to gather. The room falls silent as they all wait for you to account your account of the evening's events. Start of the evening, Rector Qualms was in the drawing room and enjoying a spot of tea. It was the knife. The knife was in the drawing room when the murderer walked in. 
I'm gonna go with love. Being ejected in love was too much. In the heat of the moment, the murderer lost control and... I'm probably wrong on this. I feel like I might be wrong. Also, sorry if the video has like issues now and then. Um, I think when it goes to a black screen and comes out, it has it, like problems and stuff. Anyways, nonetheless, the murderer is still intended to see tonight. The person who killed Rector Qualms is. Hmm. Plantin pauses, his scar halfway to his mouth. This was heard a detective. Could have sworn you just accused me of murder, which is patently ridiculous, of course. You explain how Lord Plantin lied about the alibi at the time of the murder by claiming to have spent the evening with Frost Bills. <gasps> Lord Plantin lets his cane fall to the floor with a clattering bang. Silence descends, and a soft, regret filled voice he confesses. Well, yes, actually. That's just how it happened. Excellent work, Scotland Yard, the assaulted bastard. You are methodical and clever and expose the murderer. Expertly executed. Um, I played through that one, so I think I'm gonna fit in case file three on this. Suspects on parade. Social obligations are to be expected. They are unavoidable, much like death and taxes. Fortunately for us, taxes weren't on the excursion list this weekend. It's delightfully ghastly. Lieutenant Stoutheart has come to a sticky end. I'm afraid, murdered in the kitchen. Alright, we were, you know, polishing our croquet mallet again. Two people in one. Let's. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was in the kitchen with Lieutenant Stoutheart tonight. I remarked on the dangers of leaving broken glass and an empty frame on the floor, and then I. Well, I left. Mm. Would you like my professional opinion? The doctor inquires. I. Uh, I think Lord Plattington is patently insane. A classic psychopath. Er, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, very interesting. The murder weapon. Yes. Well, my professional opinion. I did examine the body well enough to know. I need to stop asking them about the murder weapon. Alright, the pistol is not the murder weapon. It was a kitchen trying to solve the mystery of who broke the portrait of Queen Victoria. Tenant Stoutheart denied it, so I took the photograph with me. I was going to dust it for prints later. Huh? Oh, I can help with the mode department detective. She flips through her notebook and reads, Harris von Pinch, revenge, question mark? Now how's that? Huh? Trying to possible interview wounds and conjectured List patterns with likely heights, potential murders, and while well, I've come up with nothing. Town 10. Alright, it's not the war. Harris glances about to be sure you won't be overheard. I was in the kitchen tonight, true. I left when Lieutenant Stoutheart started talking about progressive politics. I mean, really? Penelope once admitted to me how jealous she was of Lieutenant Stoutheart. I remember wondering how in the world anyone could be jealous of Lieutenant Stoutheart. I mean, really. Hmm. <laughs> Von Pinch gives it a good try. The weapon? Well, it had to be something rather murdery. Lethal? Something deadlyish, right? Tell Ted for her. Probably was the rope. Alright, there's shards of broken glass littered about the body. <clears throat> Plattington dines to answer you. Airman Penelope was just leaving. Went to find the tent stout heart. The floor covered with the remains of the portrait of Queen Victoria. Of course, I turned right around. Mm -hmm. Would you consider cowardly blackmail to be a reason to kill? 
You know, so would I, and I have no Major Thomas is being blackmailed by Lieutenant Stoutheart. There's the one person I haven't talked to. As you examine the poker, you notice blood stains on the edge. Shiver traces your spine as you realize this must have been used to commit the murder. Alright, so it was the poker? I think it might be Penelope. Major Thomas appears oddly forlorn. Tenant Stoutheart broke the tiny portrait of Queen Victoria in the kitchen this evening. Dropped it on the floor intentionally. Well, I couldn't linger after that. Love, the Major blows out his lips in disgust, a weakness, one which Dr. Weiner was afflicted with. In love with Lieutenant Stoutheart of all people, no less. Um, let's check our notebook. <clears throat> Alright, we gotta figure out the order of this evening. Oh, I can click and drag. Alright, so jealousy, the poker. Alright, let's try this. Suspects file into the room, followed by Constable Bobby, who had just arrived on the scene. You study yourself as you take everyone through the events of the evening. Starting so began while the tent start out was tidying up a bit in the kitchen. At the time, a parade of suspects marched through the kitchen. Poker, which was in the kitchen when the murderer walked in. Jealous. Jealousy had reared its ugly head. They argued until the killer could take it no more, and then. Quack. But who committed the dastardly crime? Why, none other than. Ah. Don't be adult. We're in this detective game together, aren't we? Sharing information, pulling our deduction. Now, how could I be the murderer? Flashing a smug smile while the constable turned towards you. Well, Tentative, I think I'll take this investigation from here. Uh-oh. It appears that your investigation tactics require some strengthening. Keep at it. You'll get your man next time. Attempt to reconstruct the order of the evening's events based on the testimony and will help you find the answer. Okay, let's try this again. I thought I had it. Oh, because he said he went in there after her, didn't he? All right, so the last person in there has to be it. Watch out, Paris is after him. Dreadful and uneventful. Master Percy has been found dead. Having spent the evening writing out suffragette brochures, you are completely unaware of the moments or movements of the other guests. Still, there are more disagreeable ways to spend the evening. All right. Let's start with the kid. She nods meekly, I was in the drawing room, but when I asked Master Percy about the stain, er, but when I asked Master Percy, he was very messy, I was just to bed like I'm a child. Okay, so Constance saw a stain. Hmm? Sorry, what did you just ask me? Your question, she isn't part of 
I understand the entire conversation. I was stuck inside a cupboard at the time. I distinctly heard Lord Claddington say the word blackmail and kill and you. Does that help at all? Good kid, good kid. Now I can get you a look. Usually reserved for weak old fish. Yeah, you are doing your job, I know. I just don't need to be here while you do it. He more chooses his words carefully. Since a soul like me can always tell there's tension between people. In this case, there's outright hatred between Lord Constance and Master Percy. Mm -hmm. I set the drawing room window open, and the night, the teasing mistress filled the room. But I beat a retreat, a strategic retreat, when I saw Frost Bills approaching. I would let Master Percy deal with that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, I would never dare venture an opinion, but even without my glasses, I could tell that Master Percy looked quite perfect. Yes, that's the word I'd use. Alright, so it was the rifle. Frost stuck with the whole thing. It was a vendetta swarm sort, the better sort. They're always swearing revenge on some or the other. In this case, it was Madame and Drury swearing revenge on Master Percy. His gaze is pitiless. Closed the thoughtlessly open drawing room window and I left. That buffoon, Madame Drury, was entering as I went, and Master Percy was certainly alive. So it was him, then him, then her. She asked about the stain. No. So when he was in there, she showed up. She thought he looked perfect. He closed the window. Then she should have. I think it was her. No, it couldn't have been her. Let's try a word constant. It, this is a weird one. Word constants, hatred, gun. Real quick. Mm. Simply, I spilled my puree, beet digestive, all over Master Percy. So embarrassed, I leave the drawing room right away. I would have slunk out the window in shame, but they were all closed. All right. Yeah, it was Constance. So let's let's accuse the child. There's a gathered Constable Bobby arrives at the estate just in time for a dramatic reveal. Everyone looks at you as you begin recounting what happened. Starting the evening, Master Percy retired to the drawing room with the only occupant of the house that actually saw the murder. Everyone visited the room tonight. Everyone had a motive, but only one had an opportunity. The rifle. Told the D, the rifle is already in the drawing room, waiting to be utilized. Killer had hid Master Percy for years, our cold and calculating murderer, the craft of the crime down to the last detail. Who done it? Was it the Sly Lord, or could it have been the Deceiving Dawn? It was none other than. Aww. Is this some sort of game the ward inquires plaintively? If it is, I don't like it, not one bit. And I'm not the murderer. I promise I'm not. The detail of the stain on Master Percy's body was the key to the whole mystery. Only two people would have known about the accident. The guests that caused the accident and the murderer themselves. 
wore constant described Master Percy's clothing as being stained, indicating they were there just prior to the murder. <gasps> so I suppose it wouldn't do me any good if I tried to pin the blame on my doll, Miss Pickles. The word scowls annoyed, and think I almost got away with it. Excellent work. Your detective's work was spot on. You've cured correctly and cut the killer. An astounding performance. Yeah, just ignore that first one that happened. Alright, um... I, I think I might keep going through these cases today, but I want to make it, like, last longer. So, let me... Let me debate that. Uh, I want to... This game's so fun, I want to keep playing it. Um... I think I'll call that it for this recording session since I've been through, like, a game already. Because I played all of DLC Quest today, and then I played a chunk of this. So, next time, we'll be on Modus Operandi. Okay, I'm reading all the names. Okay, I'm gonna stop reading things. Okay. This game's super duper fun. It's really cheap on Steam. I would get it. Or I already got it, clearly. I highly advise you guys getting it if you like these kind of things. I love solving murder mysteries. It's my jam. Alright, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye!